Hello and welcome again to Marty's Matchbox Makeovers. Today is a short video, the reason for that is because I'm going to a back to basics style video where I'm concentrating on an older vehicle, one of the original 1 to 75 series and it's going to be this number 69A comma delivery van which is in the Nestle chocolate manufacturing livery. These came out in 1959 and it's a tiny little thing, they're only 57 millimeters long. It's a nice little toy. It has a, an additional feature where I think it's the only one I know of that has a sliding door on the side for the driver to get in and out. These sell for 50, 60, 70, up to $100 in really good condition. But according to Roger Darkins' Regular Wheels catalogue, one sold for $1,500 once because it had fine tread silver plastic wheels. This one has grey plastic wheels. It's painted in this dark maroon red. It's had a fair bit of play. It's been in and out of the toy box a number of times, you can see. The front right hand tyre has an imperfection in it, which is a rather cute feature and could even be a collectible item. But what I'm going to do is reverse it so that the damage is on the inside and not noticeable. This is held together with a peculiar splayed legs on the front and a tab on the rear. I have seen it before. They can be tricky to release the base without damaging the model. But basically, you just use some long nose pliers and keep squeezing until the legs are deformed sufficiently to enable the base to be levered off. This model's got 30 CWT stamped on the bottom, which means it's a 30 hundred weight van. Now in North America, 100 weight is 100 pounds. In the UK, it's 112 pounds. It doesn't make much sense. So this vehicle, uh, as a 30 hundred weight truck, could carry just over one and a half metric tons of chocolate. That's a lot of bars of chocolate. Inside, you can see just there at the top, there's a groove that the top of the door runs in. And the bottom of the door is held in position by a ridge on the inside of the base. So very clever, ingenious and has stood the test of time. Nice design feature that. Now my first idea was that I wasn't going to remove the axles. But because this wheel has uh, imperfection on it, I decided I'm going to have to cut the axles off and replace them, both front and rear, so they match. So before I cut them off, I just check in my little box of spare axles and try and find some suitable replacements. Bearing in mind that the heads should be similar in size to the originals and should match each other. So here you can see the first two I pulled out, they've got different sized heads. Having done this hobby for quite a while now, I'm fully aware that the vehicles have subtle differences between them. Uh, here's one example of it with these, these axle ends. So I rummage around to find another one. And this time it's a win. So these are a little bit rusty and worn looking, so I'll just give them a clean up with some fine emery paper and maybe a bit of wire wall to give them a bit of shine and they'll be good to go. So now I'm confident I've got some replacements I'm going to cut the originals off using these side cutting nips. Very strong metal those axles I must admit sometimes I struggle to cut through them. Now another problem I've experienced before is the axles are seized to the wheels. The reason for this is that corrosion sets in and the axle actually swells slightly. You can break the tyres or wheels taking them off with force. So I'm trying to make up a little rig here to make it easier for me to do without breaking the wheel. So I've just got a scrap piece of dressed pine here. Cut off a little piece there. I'm going to drill a hole in it. The idea will be I'll be able to hammer the axle into the hole and free it from the wheel. I'll 
I've just got a washer here that I'm going to use as a support for the wheel when I hit it with the hammer. So I'm drilling a hole the same size as the inside hole on the washer. To attach these washers to the block of wood, I'm using a two-part epoxy resin, the Araldite. It's a 50-50 mix of hardener and product. I don't need much today, just a small droplet of each. That's probably six times as much as I need. It has to be thoroughly mixed, otherwise it won't cure. So a good minute of, of mixing. I'll just place a little bit on there. I don't want it to squeegee out too much. It might do, but it's not. It's better if it doesn't. I just place it exactly over the hole there. Now I've got a little rubber washer here off of a roofing screw. And I'm going to attach that there as a buffer to try and absorb the shock from the wheel. And hopefully I'll be able to hammer the the seized axle ends out easily. I've given this little device a name. It's the axle separation system. I thought I'd have a bit of fun there and make it look professional. Like it's a bought product. <laughs> now this is new technology, so let's test it out. Put the wheel on there hit the end of the axle and boof, out it comes, look at that. Still have to wiggle it for the last bit. But hey, you know what? I'm happy with that. Four wheels in perfect condition and four rusty axles removed. Quite good, I'm gonna set that little tool, my new tool away and probably set it aside for use in the future. Today I'm going to strip the paint off the model using caustic soda. Now I need a glass jar. Um, I know there's one in the cupboard, so I'll just go and have a look for that now. There's a lot of junk in here, and uh, it takes me a little while to find it. But there it is, always the last thing right at the back in the corner. So that's a good sized jar. Once when I used the caustic soda, the, I put too much in and it boiled over and went all over the kitchen bench. So I'm putting in a few precautionary measures today. I'm sitting it in a tray that's got some absorbent paper towel in it. So if it spills over, it should be captured and not go everywhere. I've bent some little pieces of wire there, steel wire, to enable me to drop the pieces of the model into the caustic soda and to retrieve them after the paint's been removed. I bought this for like $4, I think, from the local supermarket. It's one of those cons, look, you open it up and the container is half full. It's always the way these days. I have warmed, pre-warmed the glass by running it under the hot tap in the sink because I didn't want to put really hot water in it and risk fracturing the glass first thing. So, so far so good. I'm lowering the parts in, as you can see, and I'm bending the end of the wire over the lip of the jar so it doesn't fall all the way in. Uh, I'm using one of Julie's measuring cups here. This is half a cup, so that's probably about a quarter of a cup I'm putting in. Let's see what it does. Nothing, and then all of a sudden everything. It just goes crazy. Look at that. It's like a mad scientist's experiment. It's quite fun, actually. I like to change now and again the things that I do. It keeps the hobby interesting. Look at that. It's just frothing away in there like crazy. What a It's an exothermic reaction too, which means it's hotter. It, get, it creates heat as it's reacting. So you've got like boiling caustic soda there. Probably not very good if you get it on your skin. So. Very carefully I retrieve the parts and drain them on this paper towel and I rinse them off with some cold water before I actually handle them. Did a good job of removing the paint though. 
So after I've washed them off, uh, the metal actually went sort of dark grey, probably as a result of the chemical reaction. There's an example of an area that I've cleaned with the Dremel and the lower area that I haven't. You can see it's very dark grey. So I just run the soft wire brush over at low RPM. Uh, a subscriber recommended I run the Dremel at a lower RPM to re reduce the number of fibres that fly off. And it actually seemed to work. So a very simple model, it's only three parts plus the wheels. But I'm going to undercoat these now and give them a coat of red paint. That's undercoated. Look at that, like magic. And I do love it when they're undercoated. You can have a look at the imperfections in the casting. But more than that, it makes the details stand out. You've got a filler cap, door handles, and a beautiful grill. I've seen that before, that grill, and I'll show you at the end. There's a couple of other models that I've got of comma vans, but they're different variants. On the back, another door handle and some hinges, and a couple of windows there. Paint the base with the satin black out of the pressure pack. That's a really quick and easy way to do it. And today, because my Tamiya paints have run out, I'm using Mr. Hobby 385, as I felt this color closely matched the original. Although, if you do look online, you will see that, as is common with Matchbox vehicles, they did vary in color over time, depending on the mix of the paint in the factory. So any red would probably do. Using these hemostats or locking forceps, I pick a part on the model that can't be seen afterwards after it's back together. And here's my new spray booth. I give it a, a clean, I dismantled it, cleaned it, spruced up the fan, and now it's a lot lighter in there so I can see better what I'm doing. It was covered in paint before, um, so I gave it like a, an annual service after I painted the two red bits there, the door and the body, I put it in the oven to bake. And whilst I'm waiting, I thought I'd do some baking myself and make a date and walnut loaf. By the time I finish this loaf, the model should be fully baked and I'll be able to handle it without leaving fingerprints on the paint. Look at that, I even do the uh, cleaning up afterwards too. Wipe down the benches, all done. Now this is 45 minutes later. It's a bit darker than I wanted, but I'll tell you what, with a bit of butter on it, it's absolutely beautiful. Right, have you seen this before? It's my wheel cleaning rig. It's just a little block of wood with some nails in it with the heads cut off and I can stick up to five wheels on this at a time. Today I'm using a little bit of kitchen cleaner on there. And I'm just giving them a bit of a spruce up with a toothbrush. They weren't too bad actually. But I couldn't live with myself if I didn't do the whole job. And this is one part that I do on every model. I clean the wheels even if they don't need it. Because at the end when I photograph them, quite often you can see... If the wheels haven't been cleaned there may be some grime in the groove and it spoils the overall look of the project. Now, I don't want to lose these because oh it's a nightmare if you drop one of these on the floor they just fly off into the corner somewhere and you don't see them for 12 months. So I always have a little uh, sauce, soya sauce pot standing by to put things in like that. There's the axles cleaned like I said, with some emery paper. And it's pretty much time to start putting this thing back together. So to begin with, I'm going to put the wheels and axles back on the base. Now, remember, these aren't the original axles, so I have to cut them to length. And I've got to check that I don't put that wheel on with the imperfection facing out. So again, using the side cutters, I just guesstimate how much material I need to uh, mushroom over. Now you can see the cut there. It leaves a little sort of a nipple on the end. Well, I'll grind that off with a grindstone 
and then because it's flat when I try and peen the end over it peens over evenly and it's a little bit cleaner finish I'm using that bolt that I used the other week still kicking around so I thought oh, well, I might as, <laughs> might as well use it put it in the vise and using my power drill on a hammer setting and a nail punch I'm just going to hit it for 20 seconds it's quite noisy everything vibrates on the table now, I probably could have made that axle a little bit shorter but it's always better to be a little bit longer than a little bit too short as I'm sure you can imagine as long as they're the same the end product should look good now I'm putting on these reproduction decals that I ordered online I can't remember which particular supplier I got these from I've had these a while now I hope they don't fall apart you know sometimes if the decals are really old they don't perform too well you know, fingers crossed I'm, I'm cutting it trimming it to size and doing a test fit to make sure it's the right scale you know some of these models you, you order the wrong decal for or the right decal but for the wrong model like the maybe the, the king size or whatever but I've got this one right and it says Nestle or is it Nestles who knows I bet you in different parts of the world they say it's Nestles So just dip that in some warm water. Let the backing paper soak for a little bit so that the decal releases from the backing paper. And I just slide it with my finger and thumb initially and then grip the backing paper with some small tweezers. Hold it in position and drag the backing paper out from underneath the decal. That way you don't get any creases in the decal. I found it's the best method for me. Position it with a toothpick, immediately suck up any excess moisture to try and get that thing to start to grab. Now there's a little funny edge there, so I drag the decal off, it's folded under itself. So I drag it off the model and back on again, and it just uncreased that corner. So I'm pleased, it's going well. After I put the other decal on, I let them dry, and then I put this Mr. Hobby Mark Softener on there. And it seals the edges, makes them form into the nooks of the, like that little window there, that recess where the, the sticker is, it's curved around on the inside. Well, because the decal's cut at right angles on the corner, it lifts off on the corners a little bit, but that solution helps it set and uh, moulds itself to the model. So it's just one thing to do put the door in or two things the door in and the base on so that little tab goes in the slot in the back very simple model but cute and this is going to look great in my collection because I don't have this one and I just squeeze the base on and it clicks on as though it's never been removed the original model came out with various uh, paint schemes Sometimes the rear bumper was painted, sometimes not. Today I'm not painting the rear bumper. Instead I'm going to do the front bumper, the grille and the headlights with the Pentel ink pen. It's very fiddly at this scale. And I do take my time because it's very, very easy to ruin the model at this stage if you just sneeze and put a blob of silver on there. Now here's a... Uh, a page from Roger Darkins' manual it says there $1,500 for this model if it comes with the plastic wheels that are silver isn't that amazing so keep your eyes peeled at those markets on the weekend when they start to reopen and you might find one well look at the transformation isn't it a beautiful little thing looks like it's straight out of the box and I do love these little models the older ones especially because of their simplicity, the colour schemes, and the quirkiness about each and every one of them. That sliding door on this one, for example, a nice little feature. And just look at the front end on this. It's the cutest little van going. Remember I said I'd seen that grill on a few other models? Well, I'm going to show you now the other models that I'm talking about. There's the Lions Made Ice Cream Canteen and the Radio Rentals Delivery Service Van. Now the different scales, but I've doctored the photos there, I've positioned the models in different areas 
So they look, they actually look like they're the same scale, but they're not. But a nice little trio of models. Now a mate of mine works for a confectionery warehouse and distribution centre. He works in the fudge packing section. He said they're after a van delivery driver. So me and Kevin have got a little job now. We are delivering chocolate and fudge around the neighbourhood to all those people that have ordered online. Hmm, where is he? He's been gone two minutes now. He said he was going to be back real quick. Oh, there he is. So thank you all for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this. And if you have, please like and subscribe and tell your friends. So until next time, this is Marty saying goodbye and thanks for watching.